Now some interesting things start to happen when you pass light through a large number of evenly spaced slits. Remember from our double slit experiment that there are certain interference patterns that form on a screen when monochromatic light is passed through two slits. The brightest fringe is found in the center with alternating dark and bright fringes on either side. We can also set up a system where there are more than two slits. Anytime we have a series of parallel slits, we call it a diffraction grating. Just like in a double slit situation, we will see the light moving through the slits and interference patterns will form on a screen. What is interesting is that we will get the same pattern, but it will be more emphasized. We will still have the bright fringes and dark fringes in the same places, but the bright fringes become steeper and the dark fringes become wider. The more slits there are, the more pronounced the peaks become. Because there are a lot of slits, there is no good way to define which peak is m equals zero. So we call these peaks the principal maxima. Just like in our double slit, the light spreads out as it passes through the slit. These rays begin in phase, but when they reach the screen, they will either still be in phase or they may be out of phase. The good news is that the same equation for that change in path length is used for the double slits is the same equation we use for multiple slits. The same rules for constructive or destructive interference also apply. So if the waves arrive in phase on the screen, then constructive interference occurs and a bright fringe forms. If the waves arrive out of phase, then destructive interference occurs and the dark fringe forms. The only difference really is that in a diffraction grating, the slits are usually closer together and this is what causes the principal maxima to occur. Suppose you have a diffraction grating with 10,000 lines per centimeter. You send a beam of white light through it to a screen two meters away. Find the angles for the first order diffraction of 380 nanometers and 760 nanometers. We are looking for the angles, so we can go ahead and rearrange our equation for the sine of theta. Since we are looking at the first order, m is equal to one, which means we can get rid of that. That gives us the sine of angle theta equal to the wavelength divided by the distance between the slits. Now it says we have 10,000 lines in one centimeter. If we take that centimeter and divide it into 10,000 parts, then the distance between the lines must be one micrometer, or one times 10 to the negative sixth meters. Using our equation then, we find the sine of theta equal to 0 0.380. And if we take the inverse sine of 0 0.380, we find an angle of 22.33 degrees for the first order of diffraction of red light. We can do the same thing for violet light and we end up with a sine of theta equal to 0 0.760. Inverse signing that gives us an angle of diffraction of 49.46 degrees for the violet light. Notice at this point that the waves of white light coming in are not being bent in the same manner for the entire range. The light is being separated out into different colors. So what is the distance between the ends of the rainbows that are produced? Well, we just found the angles produced by the ends of the rainbows, and we were given the distance to the screens from the slits. This distance allows us to create a triangle with a screen. If we take our red light, we know that the angle is 22.33 degrees, and the adjacent leg is 2 meters. To find the opposite, we would use the tangent function. So the distance on the screen, which we have labeled y, is the distance to the screen times the tangent of angle theta. When we use our angle of diffraction for red light, we find that the red is positioned 2.338 meters from the center of the screen. Doing the same thing for the violet light, we find it falls 0.815 meters from the center of the screen. And since we want to know the size of the rainbow, we simply take the distance of the red light and subtract the distance of the violet light and find 1.52 meters, 